What's going on everybody? Alex here with Nick and Zalana Landscape. Trust you guys are all doing well. I wanted to make this quick video because I got hit with a pretty big surprise whenever I went to repair the undercarriage on my Bobcat MT85 walk behind skid steer. So if you have these walk behind skid steers or any skid steer for that matter, anything with tracks, you know that on the bottom there's a lot of rollers and there's a lot of things going on down there. Well, ours was getting sloppy and I didn't check it quick enough and it ended up costing me big. Cost me $5,200 just in parts. That's not labor, we did all the repair ourselves. So I'm gonna show you guys in this video what you can do to avoid this same mistake. Stay tuned. All right guys, so as you can see, I have my share of machines. I got two skid steers sitting right there. Got an excavator sitting right there. I had a Bobcat MT52 for about three years and I've had this MT85 for four years, five years. Uh, but I didn't realize how bad I was really screwing myself whenever I was running this thing and I knew it needed to be changed and I didn't look into it quick enough. So like I said, let's dive into it and I'm gonna show you what you can do to avoid this same mistake. All right, so bear with me. I broke my ankle and tore some ligaments in my foot. The machine's in the trailer. I can't get it out, so it's gonna stay in the trailer. But I'm gonna show you guys, I'll climb up in here, whatever I need to do. And I'm also, I've also got the uh, parts breakdown that I'll show you guys. But if you can see down in here, and I'll zoom in, but essentially what you have on the front, we're looking at the bottom here. On the top, the only thing there is on the top is the sprocket, and that's what actually turns the track. That's what goes into the machine and connects to the hydraulic system and actually drives the thing. So everything on the bottom is essentially just for stability and uh, just to give you a smooth ride, I guess, and to protect the machine as much as possible. So there's a lot of things going on down there, but essentially what you got in the front is a big idler. In the back, you have a big idler, and then in between those two big idlers, you have five rollers. And there is the four rollers on the front are all the exact same, and the one on the back is just a little bit different. But I'll dive into that a little bit more here. But uh, just wanted to show you guys what this looks like. And again, I apologize for the crappy footage or the crappy view here, but uh, it's the best I can do with my situation, my current health situation. So that's what you get there. But like I said, I'm gonna show you on paper the breakdown, show you what that looks like, and uh, show you how this all goes together and what mistake I made. All right, guys, so here it is on paper. Uh, I got this from our dealer. This is how we figured out exactly what parts we need. So if you look right here on the back, that's that idler I was talking about. That's the front idler right there. And then you've got all your rollers down here, which they only show two different ones. They only show two here, but that's because there's four of these and then there's only one of these. So basically, I'm going to show you here on the paper where I screwed up. All right. So essentially, these all have the same build. They all get put together the same. They're just different. All the shafts are the same. All these inner parts are the same. The outer parts are just as different. So each one looks like this. This is the assembly that has to go in there. So what you have right here, see if I can focus here. This part right here, these two, the two closest, crap, this thing will not focus. All right. The two pieces closest to the idler itself, one on the left, one on the right, it's number six if you can read that. But those are bushings, they are brass bushings. And then number one and number one, one on the left, one on the right, those are seals. And then five and five is a washer. So essentially what you have is you have your roller or idler, like I said, the inner part is all the same for all these bottom ones. So essentially you have seven pins going through there holding on two idlers and five rollers, but they're all the exact same. So where I screwed up, what I should have done a long time ago is replaced six and six, one and one, five and five, okay? I could have bought the bushing, the seal, and the washer for each side. Still would have probably been a thousand bucks by the time you do both sides. But I could have bought just those bushings and just those seals and washers and not had to buy all the rollers and idlers 
but I'm going to show you what happened to mine right here and where I cost myself big money. So those of you guys that understand this kind of stuff are going to see how bad this got. But right here, you can see that there. This here, you can see how much play was in these. These back ones are embarrassing how much play this. Okay, that's how much play there was in here. And this is what some of our pens look like. But it basically destroyed our idlers and our rollers. All right, so as you can see, if it's hard to tell, but these things, this is a kind of a good example right here, okay? These are supposed to be the same size. Look at that middle piece. Look how much thicker it is right here than it is right here. And that's what happens, and this is really sharp right here and right here from metal on metal contact with the tracks, but it was all due to this stuff being so sloppy that it was just banging things around and causing unnecessary wear. But if I would have taken the time and been smart, and you may have to replace these pins too whenever you do that. I said just the bushing, seal, and washer. You may have to do the pins too, but I mean, this is just beat up. This is beyond, beyond repair uh, on most of these. Same with this. This one's not so bad, but this one is pretty chewed up. And there's a nice lip starting right there. You can tell there's a lot of metal on metal contact in there. This one's really bad right here. So that is what you're looking at if you tear the stuff up. So this is all the stuff I had to buy. But basically this table right here cost me $5,200 to get this thing repaired. And again, that was just in parts. So highly recommend if you have one of these machines, uh, tear it apart whenever you get a chance this winter or whatever. Tear it apart, see what needs to be done, but don't get to where I got. This machine has 1,700 hours on it. We use it every single day whenever we're out in the field. So it gets its use, but I just wish I would have caught it before it got to this point. So I'm making this video strictly to save you guys. So I hope this helps. Uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. Let me know your experiences. Uh, let's share our experiences and try to help each other here. And give us a big thumbs up if you enjoy this video. And if you're new, hit that subscribe button. Helps us let uh, helps let us know that you guys like what we're doing. So let me know. But all right, guys. So we are rebuilding the rollers on the MT track system. This is the MT85. It's pretty simple. Really, not much to it. Put a little uh, oil around this one, smack it in with the rubber mallet, and then once it gets down in there, you can put a socket on there, tap it through, and then the, put this on there. Just smack that down with the rubber mallet, get it flush, and then once you get it flush, you can take the washer, set it on there, and snap, smack it a little bit if you got one side that's just a hair high, and that'll get it flush. But that's what they look like out of the box. And that's what they look like once you're done. You do the same thing on both sides. Really, as far as track loads go, this is probably one of your easiest things other than changing a filter. And some of those filters are hard this to get. This is one of your back rollers. It's the second to last one, but it's basically the same as those middle four. It just doesn't have that piece in the middle. But same concept, put those two pieces in. And then on all of them, you'll have a washer and then the rod will go through. Moral of the story, guys, every machine's different, uh, but you just got to pay attention. You got to know your machines and maybe do a little more investigating than we did. Try to get to the bottom of it uh, before it's too late, so to say. So, all right, guys. Well, that's all I got for this one. Hope you enjoyed this video. Give us a thumbs up, comment down there, hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed, and I'll see you in the next one.